Hi guys, I'm Smithers, and uh, tonight's video I'm making is just kind of a review of my different welders and stuff. I got several different machines now. Um, I have different welders for different jobs, and this one here is my newest one. Um, I just finally got it all finished. It took me about a month to uh, assemble all these parts and pieces, get it all together, and uh, build a cart for it and stuff. This one's actually two welders in one. This is a uh, a MIG on top and a stick on the bottom but they both run off the same power source and uh, I'm into this one about uh, 750 bucks now uh, it's an investment I'm not disappointed in um, a lot of you know I've been a full-time carpenter since 03 but my uh, passion for metal fab has kind of taken over and I've even considered a career change but uh, I've just been trying to expand on my uh, equipment and stuff and uh, this machine is real neat. It was kind of overwhelming at first. There's a lot of a lot of buttons, knobs, and switches, but I uh, I did get it all figured out, and I'm comfortable running this thing now. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all these leads and cords off, and kind of show you the the different features this one has. Well, guys, the way this machine works, I have. I have two sets of leads here, a positive and a negative on each side. And this side is for MIG welding and this side is for stick welding. And it's just a matter of this switch here, switch it from stick or over to MIG, and that'll determine where the power goes to. And right now it's set up on the on the MIG side. My positive goes into this machine that feeds the wire. Um, this is my MIG gun here, and this is my ground clamp. Uh, the ground clamp is uh, shared by both sides. It's just on a on a quick release here, so I can put it over to this side to stick weld. Um, back here in the back, I have my uh, my stinger, and this is nice. It's on a 100 foot lead. It'll reach a long ways, guys. Um, this is for stick welding. Um, it has a short power cord on it, which I could change to a longer one, but the that long lead kind of makes up the difference and this here is just an extension cord so that I can uh, plug it into the machine and then plug that ground clamp into it and have a ground clamp that's just as long a lead as this uh, the stinger here so uh, when I built this cart I put I put hooks to hang all these leads on and I just put a chain around this bottle of argon uh, and it bolts here on these tabs that I welded up it, this bottle of argon is 25% CO2, 75% argon, and that's just for MIG welding. Uh, it's, it's not needed for stick welding. This uh, this box I put on here is uh, just a container for I got a couple sets of welding gloves and then my electrodes uh, for stick welding. And this uh, this right here is Lincoln. It's a squirt gun. And basically, this just feeds uh, the wire through. I got a 33-pound wire, uh, 035. Um, like I say, this this machine just feeds it. The the power comes from this machine. Well, guys, also on top of this machine, I have this little door I put on, and and here's a hook, and that's so I can uh, lift this machine. Well. See, I have an overhead hoist here, and if I gotta disassemble it, the top of this cart comes off, and I can lift this machine out. Uh, altogether, this machine's about 500 pounds. It's it's really hard even to even to roll the thing around, guys. It's really heavy. But uh, uh, this this upper knob right here, this controls the heat of uh, my stick welder. Uh, the lower knob controls the heat of uh, my MIG. And this knob controls the wire speed coming out of this machine. And uh, it also has a switch. I'll switch it to stick, but it'll also power a TIG welder, guys. And I can't wait to get my hands on the right TIG welder. Um, I've seen some cheap ones, but I refuse to uh, throw my money away on a, on a cheap uh, welder, guys. You, you really get what you pay for. I'm... Uh, I'm looking out for the right deal on a nice TIG, and then I'll build a I'll build a rack up here to hold those parts, depending on what I get. That's about it on this one, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna take you on to 
on my next motor, which is the first motor I ever bought. Guys, this is a snap-on T20 volt a MIG welder. This is the first welder I ever bought. I got this back in 2007. I learned to weld on this, and I had nobody to teach me. I had to learn from uh, watching YouTube videos, but I've come a long way since then. Uh, back in 07, this one cost me a thousand bucks, but uh, its age is starting to show. It, uh, it definitely needs a new paint job. I'm gonna do that soon. I'm gonna pop all these panels off and uh, go through, uh, blow out the inside, clean out all the dust. I'm sure it's filthy inside. Uh, check all my connections and stuff. But uh, this has been a great welder. I more than made my money back on it. Um, a couple of things I, I did to this one. I uh, I added this ground clamp. I like this clamp because I can uh, use it to clamp pieces together and then weld them. Um, and I added the same plug that I have uh, on my other machine, so I can uh, share just one outlet. Uh, this one has a slightly smaller bottle, but it's the same mixture, uh, 75, 25 uh, argon to CO2. Uh, up on top here, this is a, a box that stays on top of it, and it has all my, my welding supplies, consumables, some uh, grinding wheels, tips, and nozzles, uh, extra contactor, and actually some burn cream for your fingers, and... Uh, several things in here. And then under the hood, this is another uh, 33 pound 035 MIGWIRE uh, steel. Um, this is the contactor. Um, since 07, I've probably had to change that twice. It's sort of like a fuse, uh, they do blow. And, uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's a, a simple welder. I got my wire speed, my heat, and then uh, this one. Will also, you can plug in a uh, a spool gun for welding aluminum. Um, it's it's just sort of like this this MIG gun, but it, it takes a small spool of wire here on top that's real close to the nozzle. Um, you can run aluminum wire through the machine, but it's so soft. It's uh, it'll bind up inside of your inside of your hose here. It's uh, I've heard it um, compared to pushing a garden hose up a hill. If you can understand what I'm saying there, but like I say, it's it's been a great welder. This is still my my everyday welder. I uh, I always pull this one out first. This is the one I'm most familiar with. It has a a 50 foot cord on it, so I can reach out of the garage a little ways. And I think that's about it on this one, guys. Uh, these next couple welders I have are both uh, 110 volt. I can plug them into any household outlet, which is nice. Um, this one on top, this is a, a Century MIG welder. And under the hood here, I got uh, steel wire in it right now, set up for uh, gas welding. Same mixture guys, uh, 75, 25, and I also have an option to use this uh, flux core wire. You can uh, spool it through uh, without the need for gas. Um, uh, I have, this is the ground clamp for it, and uh, there's my wand here. And then, it's pretty straightforward, I have a power switch, wire speed, and a heat selection. Uh, it's not a real wide range. I can do mostly thinner stuff with this one, but uh, I got about two hundred dollars wrapped up in this one the way it sits. Um, and then on the bottom here, this is a Craftsman 110 stick welder. Um, this one's really straightforward, guys. It's this. This is my uh, ground clamp plugs in the bottom, and then I have uh, back here. I have my power cord and. My, uh, my stinger, which holds my electrodes, um, there's no heat range knob or anything like that. It's just four selections for heat, and it's just a matter of switching this, uh, depending on how hot you want. 
I can uh, get a little bit of a hotter weld out of this, better penetration, but I can make a, a better looking weld with the, the MIG on top. This one, I don't really have any cash out of pocket. Um, I traded a little welding work for this, but it was rough when I got it and needed a full restoration. I took it all apart, um, rewired a lot of it, I cleaned it all out and uh, repainted the, the housing. And uh, it turned out to be a pretty nice little welder, actually. Um, the cart this sits on, I made out of angle iron bed frames. And uh, same style of uh, a chain and bolt holds the bottle on. And that's about it for these ones, guys. Well, guys, uh, last but not least, this is, is technically a welder, I guess. Um, it's in a toolbox here. And what this is is a series of wires and connectors and stuff. Um, I have a stinger and a ground clamp that uh, you can use to wire up a series of two or three car batteries and actually weld with those. Uh, this really isn't even a last resort in my shop. This is just for off-roading or trail riding, uh, fixing a, a busted part on your mud truck or buggy or whatever out on the trail. And I have a uh, I have a video that breaks this down and uh, explains how it all works. If you guys are interested in checking that out, I'll put a link in the description. Um, thanks a lot for uh, following along, and best advice I can give you if you're interested in buying a welder is do your research, guys, and uh, don't buy junk. You're just throwing your money away. So uh, thanks again.